Now with our vegetation painted, we're ready to do a few more things that maybe could spice up the level. The first thing that we can do is we want to actually have some light deep down in here. If we look and see what the shading is actually doing, we have very, very dark areas that don't have any ambient light. And what we can do is add a environment probe. So going back to create object, let's go to miscellaneous. We're going to click environment probe. And with this, we're just going to raise it up in the air so we can bake out a probe that our environment uses. So going back to properties, if you're not already there, we can come in here and we can say we want to generate all the cube maps, which is exactly what this is. And the box size, we can increase that to 1,000, 1,000, and uh, make the final one 1,000 as well. So this means it's a global cube map. And now underneath, we actually have some ambient light. And we can leave it exactly as it is right now with the environment probe and its influence, but we can take this one step further. Inside of the newest version, we have Spogey, which came about inside of the Steam build and has been migrated over. And Spogey is accessed through the level settings. So if we go to Tools, Level Editor, Level Settings, we can open this up and bring it over to the right. If we scroll to the very bottom, we can see that we have total illumination. And this is the, the actual GI that is in the engine. Now, I have a lot of settings here, and you may have less. If you have less settings than I have, you have to go to your Edit, Preferences, and choose Experimental Lighting Features. And we need to actually click this checkbox to get all of the integration and everything exposed. The reason we want this is because by default the integration that's in there doesn't take into account the probe for the actual global illumination. And since we've baked one, we may want to actually include it. So what we can do is we can turn it on to begin with, give it a second to pop open, and now we have a nice little global illumination. And right here we have some ambient occlusion, we have some global illumination working, but this is the default integration mode. So what I can do is highlight over this, which it says the first one is the AO and the sun bounce, but it's not taking in the actual global illumination. So we have the diffuse GI mode, which is the ambient lighting, and it's looking for specific lights. And then the last one is full GI mode. Well, in terms of experimenting, maybe we should try that in this video. So if I set this to two, we'll notice that we get a little bit darker and we can see that we have some global illumination, but it's not taking into account too much. And that's because down here we have light probes. And if we activate those light probes, now we have the GI from the environment probe also influencing this. If you notice it being a little too much, we can go down into the sky color multiplier, change that to maybe 0.5. And let's go ahead and click update lighting and update geometry. And then we can pull out even more. So these are all just ways that you can have your uh, environment probe actually influence things. Keep in mind, you're not hard set on this. You can go back to 1 or even 0. doesn't matter. You can use any of them. It's just which one do you want to use, or whether or not you want to use it with the environment probe that you baked out. So now we have that set. We have GI working on our island, we have vegetation, we have terrain textures, all of these things that work together, but we still don't have clouds. So let's go ahead and think about the two ways that we can get clouds, for the most part, into the engine. The first way is going to put a sky dome. So if you've been in the woodlands level, you notice there's a sky dome in that level. Well, in order to add that, we need to go back, go to brush, Go to Objects, Sky, and we want to choose the Forest Sky Dome. So double-clicking that, we can drag it in, and let's hide helpers for the moment, and we can see that we now have clouds everywhere. And you'll also notice this nice little thing that the ocean actually gives you real-time reflections. May be good for you and may not be. So it depends on what exactly you're looking for as far as clouds in general. So let's look at this texture in general. So we have a material of the sky, 
And how would we manipulate this? Because some of these are just blown out. Maybe we don't want that. So what we want to do is actually go to our material editor. We go to Tools, Material Editor, and we choose this and drag this over here. Let's go down to Objects, Sky, and we're going to choose the Forest Sky Dome. So going into that, we can actually change this a little bit. And the one thing that I want to do is switch from this advanced setting to something more simple. And it just so happens we have simple distance clouds. So clicking that, you'll automatically notice that we've changed the brightness quite a bit. We can change the exposure, bring that up, and maybe drop the opacity more on these. So it depends on what you want out of your clouds. But this looks a little bit more realistic, if you ask me. That way it's not blown out, and you can have a background that's a little bit more suitable to what you want. Taking this into account, this is not the only cloud setting that we can have, because inside of CryEngine 5, we've implemented volumetric clouds, which by default, they have to be enabled inside of the console. So let's go ahead and do that as well. So if we go to console, and we type in R underscore volumetric, we can see that we have volumetric clouds. So it's this first one right here. And if we set that to 1, and click enter, you'll notice that we now have clouds in the scene. So if I were to even hide the clouds that I had before, which we actually can do, so let's go ahead and reduce the opacity completely on that, you'll notice that these are actually the volumetric clouds that actually exist. So if I were to come up all the way to these clouds, they're really real clouds in our world. And there's our entire island down here taking advantage of this. So all those clouds are really, really high up there. How do we manipulate something that maybe is not way up in the atmosphere? And the answer is we can actually do this inside of the environment editor. So if I go into tools, and we go to the environment editor, and we drag this in, we can see inside of this that we have scrolling down volumetric clouds. And we have something called altitude. So if I were to change this to 500, and maybe have that, we now have clouds that are much lower. You know, quickly, I have gone up in the clouds themselves. So you're able to change that along with the cloud thickness, the actual global cloudiness. We can make it even more. So when you come up, everything's densely covered. So these are things that you just have to kind of mind as you're developing your level to maybe give it that realistic look. Keep in mind, you can also change the sun direction inside of here overall, and you can change the amount of saturation you want as well. There are numerous things that you can use to affect your environment. So basically, we've covered quite a few things in this level, and in this tutorial, we'll probably wrap it up. And then the last one, we'll go into placing props in a nice little dock, and then we'll also trigger some kind of time of day or environment switch based on an event that we cover. So this is going to end the second part, and we're going to carry it on in the third part of the video series.